Hello my outstanding friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University and Smithsonian Museum is opening back up again. Fabulous, big, big event. Now, I have things to offer that, that have not been understood. This is a goose or a duck or whatever, but it has been petrified in a manner called mud fossilization. It's, it, the process is called nucleophilic substitution. And you can see the neck and everything is here, but it's been invaded by molecules that turn it into what we just considered was stone. It's not stone, it's petrified body parts. And this is a lung, and it is a human lung, and it's been DNA certified, and I will show you the test right now. And then we're going to go into the Smithsonian. I'm going to ask for some assistance from them to understand these things. Now, the Smithsonian is out looking for bones and bits and pieces of fossils, and I have them in huge quantities. And that is the head of a bone. And that is literally the um, cartilage. And that right there is where the ligament attached to another bone that would let it rock back and forth. What it is of bone, I don't know what it is exactly, but it has 100% of its tissues out to what is called fascia. Fascia is the separation of every bit of flesh from body parts such as lungs and bones and so forth. The flesh deteriorates and turns into, literally turns into mud. That's what flesh is. It's a soft connective tissue and the fleshy stuff. The very hard connective tissue, the tendons and the and, and membranes separate organs and bones and so forth and then they turn into stone. We've always just considered them to be rocks. Well, it's time to take a whole new look because I, I fully understand this and my DNA tests prove my assertions. Plus, I've had an, an anatomist and chemists and everybody take a look at this and um, DNA, uh, well, of course, a DNA, and, um, and I had three tests done here, and they were all came back as human. Now, this is the lung right here, homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and homo sapien mitochondrial D loop. I took the sample, sent them off to be tested, and this is what the result was, and this was from a DNA blast of all the DNA that exists, and they found that the sequences of DNA that came from the lung and another one, two of the three samples I sent, were very dense, uh, excellent quality DNA sequences obtained for the 36-inch tip and the lung. Right. Excellent quality, because I took it right out of the blood. These actually still have literally blood in them. And, well, let me just show you one quick other picture, and then we'll go forward. Okay, they, they literally have blood coming out from what are considered bone foramens or any of the blood vessels. When they break and they snap, the blood it, it comes out of them. The blood stays better than anything there is in, in fossils. But it's got to be preserved in a correct conditions, a, a certain pH underneath the mud for a long duration of time, and then what happens is the invasion, it's called nucleophilic substitution. You've got electron poor molecules and you've got electron rich molecules. They come back together to become stable and turn into rock. That's nucleophilic substitution. You can look it up. It's not. It's nothing serious. It's very simple, actually. Now, so that's your blood. Now, this is the scab as I took it off, and the backing is, it's called fibrin, I believe, is what the name of this is. It's a clotting fiber that starts to take hold, and then the blood vessel, I mean the uh, blood cells, start to get stuck in it, and that's what creates the scab. Um, and uh, this shows where the, see, this is what you have down inside of bone foramens. You have a vein and you have an artery. Now, the artery, I know this is the artery because that's the red area over here. And the vein is always, has the black blood, which is, in, in, our, in mud fossils, it's black. In, uh, in us, it's bluish. Right. It's just the difference in the oxygen level of the iron, FeO, Fe2O2 and Fe2O3. O3 is your oxygenated blood. Anyway, I have a ton of information on this, absolutely ton, and I'd love to engage.
Okay, you saw the DNA test. That was on this lung right here. But I have other lungs that were also mud fossils, totally not understood yet because it's just brand new. Now, we just need to take a look at this and have um, have all the, the big guys, Peabody Museum, um, Smithsonian, and so forth, to try to understand because this really changes everything because we even have new possible new human or ish type creatures that have you know a tibia and a fibia what is a tibia and a fibia and then the toes were enclosed I termed them no toes and I discovered these mud fossils a while back and I've been studying them very deeply for quite a number of years now and um, all the tests came back correct the DNA is correct the CAT scans show the anatomy. The anatomists agree that it's 100% consistent with um, human anatomy or anatomy in general. Um, it's time for the authorities to take a consideration of this. Now, if it's wrong, it's wrong, but I, it's, it's, I find it very hard to believe that all these DNA tests, which was, this is a PCR DNA test. This was no swab. This was a, an extraction from inside of the vein areas. And I can easily find the vein areas because I know the anatomy of these. It's exactly the anatomy of a creature. And they all have veins and arteries. And I'm showing you.